Our spiritual practice segment has suggested many practices to help in the development of emotional, psychological, spiritual flourishing. The slogans to live by are sayings we could all benefit from keeping in mind. And the worth a try or occasional are also recommended to everyone to give a try once or occasionally. And then there are the practices that simply aren't for everyone, but might be for you. I know Zen meditation is not for everyone, but it is my primary spiritual practice. As we start a new congregational year, it's time to ask, what's your primary spiritual practice? If you're not so sure, it's a good time to give some attention to discerning one. Not every activity or pastime is a spiritual practice. It's a spiritual practice if it helps you cultivate development, which you can recognize by telltale symptoms like these. Increased tendency to let things happen rather than make them happen. More frequent attacks of smiling from the heart. More frequent feelings of being connected with others and nature. More frequent episodes of overwhelming appreciation. Decisions flow more from intention or spontaneity and less from fears based on past experience. A greater ability to enjoy each moment, decreased worrying, decreased interest in conflict, in interpreting the actions of others, in judging others, and in judging the self. Increased non-judgmental curiosity. Increased capacity to love without expecting anything in return. Increased receptivity to kindness offered. And increased interest in extending kindness to others. There are some guidelines for how to make a given activity into a spiritual practice. Check them out at Choose Your Spiritual Practice post at cucmatters.org. The link is in your e-communitarian.